Good morning everyone, today we're going to be doing a step-by-step -step guide as I walk you through from level 1 to level 40 or level 45 by the time this video comes out. I don't know when this video is going to come out. But either way, we are going to hit the max level on this brand new account. So when you first log into the game, you are going to need to uh, you are going to need to accept the terms of service as well as the privacy policy in order to play the game. So you've read all of it and you click agree. The next thing it's going to ask you is to link accounts. So for example, let's say that you're an OG. You used to play New Genesis back in the Microsoft days where it was available on the Microsoft Store or even just on the Xbox. And now you're like, hey, I want to play this game on Steam or on the Epic Game Store. You can link your account and thus you keep all of your progress. However, it's very important that you do it during this moment. The first moment you've downloaded the game and you launched it and this will come up. So it's very important that you follow all the instructions if you want to link your account. Because if you mess up this step, you will not be able to link it with this specific account anymore. However, in our case, we are starting a brand new account. So we're going to click on start game. So over here, it's important not to click on first time player because that will just automatically throw you onto a ship or a random server. You don't want to be thrown on a random server. You actually want to choose what server you want to be on. That way you can play with all of your friends. So you click on close over here. And once this menu opens up, now you can see their ship one, two, three, and four. So the most populated ships are going to be ship 2 as well as ship 1 as the most players are playing on these servers which also means the economy on these two servers are going to be a little bit more stable compared to ship 3 and ship 4 where there are less players and so it's very important to ask your friends beforehand see what ship they're playing on that way you can play with them because if you're on a different ship you won't be able to play with your friends and if you want to transfer ships the only way to do so is by spending real money there is no free to play method to transfer ships so very important that you pick the right ship okay so for the sake of this video i'm going to be playing on ultra hard mode and putting myself on ship 4 because uh, i do have a couple friends there which are begging me to play on ship 4 so we're going to head over to ship 4. now once you've selected what ship or what server you want to play on you're going to get this confirmation account link so this is if you want to link your account however if you're like me and you're starting fresh and you don't need to link anything then you can simply say no now this is very important once you start the game you will be unable to link to existing pso2 accounts from other platforms so the moment you click yes over here that means this account whatever your platform you're playing on let's say you're playing on steam let's say you're playing on epic game store or whatever you will no longer be able to link a different pso2 account onto this specific account so if you want to link it to a steam account you're going to need to make another steam account if you click yes here all right so making sure that you don't mess up the step so i'm sure that you know i don't care i'm starting fresh so i click yes now the next thing you're going to notice is you have been issued a player id name which is a pn something 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 now this is not your character's name this is what other people are going to see if you add them to your friends list. So for example, if you send a friend request, people are going to see PN270 has sent a friend request. Would you like to accept or not? So obviously we want to change that name. And lucky for us, the first time is free. So you do not want to mess up this name because you only get one name change, okay? So next up, it's going to ask you whether you're playing with controller or mouse and keyboard. So for me, it's mouse and keyboard. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change my name because I don't want to be PN whatever. So I'm going to go to support menu over here and I'm going to go to change player ID name. So over here, I'm going to change it to Karopi so people actually know that, well, it's me. So now we go to register and you're going to notice here this player ID name cannot be used. Please enter another name. The reason for this is because player IDs are unique server wide. So my main account is already called Karopi, which is why I am unable to take that name on this second account because, well, that's already taken. So what we can do is we're probably going to go Karopi Sensei. And it says right here, are you sure you want to re-register as this name? And I'm going to say yes. And boom. Now when I send a friend request, people are going to see Karopi Sensei would like to add you to their friends. Do you accept or not? So now we go create our character, create new character. We're going to go human type 2-3 over here. We're going to create our character. And now we're going to fast forward this part. And once you're finally done customizing your character, you're going to notice that you get to pick six classes. But you've seen me play other classes such as the Braver, the Bouncer, and you're like, wait a second, where are those classes? Why can I only pick these six? Well, don't worry, we're going to pick our initial class and then we can switch soon after. So in our case, we're going to pick the Force, because why not? Then we can enter our name. So we're just going to go with Sil. We're just going to go with a very simple name, Sil. All right. 
So, uh, yep, alright, perfect, let's go. Once you begin, there's gonna be some cutscenes and some stuff to watch. Um, you guys can watch it, I'm gonna skip it so that I don't spoil anything. Alright, once you finish all those cutscenes, you're gonna be sent into tutorial where it's gonna teach you how to play the game. Uh, well, you know, just follow the instructions. This is literally just a tutorial, so I'll see you guys right after tutorial's finished. Alright, once you're done with the tutorial, you will be at Central City over here. Now, don't worry, if you make a second character, you're going to be able to skip the entire tutorial. So the first thing I want to talk about is, of course, our system settings. So over here, the first thing that I'm going to be changing is, of course, control settings. I just want to make sure that my uh, side button X1 is actually action 3, so I don't need to press middle mouse in order to do the weapon action. The next thing I'm going to change is in options. I'm going to change back palette switching to a single press instead of holding down the button, simply because I'm just very lazy. I'm also going to be turning off auto wall kick. So this is when you run into a wall while you're in midair, and if you hit the wall, it'll automatically kick if it's turned on. So I want to do it manually, so I press spacebar when I'm at a wall to kick. And I also want to turn off diving attack with simultaneous button inputs. This is personal preference. This is when you're gliding in the air, you can hold down spacebar and left click, and you will just smash down into the ground, like do a ground pound. However, uh, I don't like to do that. I like to have it as a specific button on my hotbar. Next thing we can do is graphic settings. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to be turning off is blur. I don't like the blur at all. I don't like the bloom either. You can keep the bloom if you want. It does make things look a lot lighter. But uh, personally, I just turn it all the way off. Uh, you can turn off fog as well, as well as anything else. However, the first thing that I like to turn on is I like to turn on AMD FSR. I turn it on to quality, and that's the one that I usually go with. And then I limit my FPS. And uh, everything else I can pretty much leave normally. It doesn't really matter to me. Now one more thing we're going to be changing in the systems is control settings. And we're going to go to keyboard. And we're going to scroll to near the very bottom. And right here there is approach camera and move away from camera. This is the zoom in and zoom out button. So by default it is the plus and minus keys next to your numpad. So if you're like me and you play with a TKL or a 10 keyless keyboard, well you don't have a numpad. So what you can do is you can set it to the other plus and minus buttons uh, actually next to your backspace key. And that is what I use for zooming out and zooming in. So now we can see we can zoom in to our character and we can zoom out. All right. So once all of that is done, we are simply just going to continue on with the storyline. We are going to be focusing on the main storyline. You can see there is a giant, uh, well, you know, yellow square thing over there, or diamond. And we're simply just going to follow it in order to uh, complete the story. Now once you get to this point in the story, you're going to unlock the, uh, the class counter. You're going to talk to her, and you're going to notice that, hey, you can now select Braver as well as Bouncer. So uh, that is how you unlock the other classes. You don't need to talk to any fancy NPC anymore. They're just automatically unlocked the moment that you uh, get the class counter. So uh, just keep focusing on the story until you get it. Then you can immediately switch to a Braver or a Bouncer or whatever. However, keep in mind you're going to need to continue on with the story until we get our subclasses. So uh, that's the next step. Now the next thing I want to talk about is the class skills over here. So this is basically like our skill tree. However, the way that we earn skill points is very different in NGS compared to other MMOs. Other MMOs, you just level up and you naturally get skill points. In this game specifically, you need to unlock them through the cocoons. So uh, if you guys were doing the tutorial, you did two cocoons. And that's why we have two skill points over here so that you can spend it on your skill tree. So the first one for the force, I would definitely get eradication PP gain as well as PP conversion. But for the majority of the classes, you can actually get all the skills. So uh, don't be too worried about your skill points. However, don't be too reckless either, because in order to reset your skill tree, it will cost a premium currency, which means it costs real money. So you don't want to mess up your skill tree. But now don't panic too much, because at the very beginning, you do get an end reset all skills uh, ticket from the very beginning, from just the tutorial. So if you do mess up the very first time, don't worry, you do have a reset all skills coupon at the very beginning, but please don't waste it. These are very, very valuable. So after progressing through the story, you have probably hit the first mission over here, where it's telling you to achieve battle power of 830 or greater, and you might not be at 830. So what should you do? Well, you have two options. The first option is to simply just level up and you will get your 830 battle power very, very easily. As you can see, I'm literally like a smidget away, so I could just go out and kill random stuff and level up very quickly. The second option is to do any side quests around the map. 
So what you want to do is you want to look at your map, press N, and you can see all the ones with like the little paper looking thing. Those are the ones with side quests. So we can see as I am running over here, this person has a little uh, book on top of his head or a list thing. You can talk to them and they have a bunch of little side quests which also give a bunch of EXP. So uh, you can see this one gives 100 EXP for simply just going to a location. So you don't even need to grind. And this is a great way to level up simply because it's giving you EXP and Meseta for uh, simply just doing some side quests. But if you're super impatient like me and you want to go super speed, well, what you can simply do is come to the item shop over here. You're going to go buy items and you're simply going to buy a two star rarity weapon. So, for example, right now I'm using a prim rod. However, uh, I'm just going to buy this one and uh, that will boost my battle power up significantly. So you can see here as I equip the weapon. Boom. You can see my battle power is now 846. And now we can continue on with the story. Now later on in the story you're going to find a mission where it's like complete three different side tasks and one of the side tasks is cause a PSE burst in Mount Magnus. So what I want you to do is come to Mount Magnus, there is the Mount Magnus teleport, you're simply just going to walk across and there's a literally a pylon looking thing here. You're going to talk to it, go to rune transfer, and tick rooms in same sectors only and see if you can find a room with a lot of players. So you can see on the top left corner currently I'm in a room with four players, myself included. And so what we're going to do is we're simply just going to follow all the E's and the T's, kill the enemies, fill up that little yellow bar. So once you fill up four bars you're going to need to find a T. So we can see here there's a green T which will allow us to proc that PSE burst. So all we need to do is uh, clear this trial and then uh, we will get the PSE burst. Now don't be disheartened if you drop a bar. It does take a little bit of time and there is a little bit of luck involved. And there we go. There's our PSE burst. Our mission is complete. We have observed a PSE burst. But uh, we're just going to continue killing all these mobs because a PSE burst basically makes mobs spawn indefinitely until the duration of the PSE burst is done. So uh, yeah, you want to take advantage of this. And once we get a PSE Climax, the boss is going to spawn and we have to kill the boss. Alright, what you want to pay attention to is the boss's elemental weakness. You can see that it is weak to the light element. So we're going to take advantage of that by using light photon arts. Or light techniques, sorry. Because I am a force, also known as like a spellcaster. So uh, I have elemental uh, abilities or spells. And thus, I'm able to take advantage of its elemental weakness. If any of your teammates do die, don't forget to revive them with the yellow flower. The green flower heals you, and the yellow flower revives people around you. And voila! We have completed it. So now we can go back to town. Once that is done, you're going to be sent to Leah May over here where she has a bunch of side tasks. I recommend picking up all the side tasks because they give a bunch of EXP and it's actually really good for leveling up. So uh, in my opinion, I would just accept everything. Now do keep in mind, as a free-to-play player, we can only accept 20 quests at any given time. But if you are a premium member, you can accept up to 40. So uh, just keep that in mind. You know, you don't want to overburden yourself with a bunch of side quests that uh, you're never going to finish. But I do recommend working through all of these side quests because uh, they do give substantial amount of EXP. Especially the ones down here, like Absorber PSE Burst 10 times gives you 25,000 EXP. That will definitely help you level up quite a bit. But don't forget, your main focus should be the main storyline over here under the main tab. This is what you want to focus. However, if you want to do something else, you know, you want to do some exploration or whatever, you're more than welcome to do all the side quests as well as all the other stuff and just explore the world because the world is really big, really beautiful. But we're going to be focusing on the main story. So what it's telling me to do is complete Gathering Tames Meet task which is actually a side task right here. All right, eventually you will get preparing for battle over here as a story quest where you need to talk to Aina at the cafe. And this is when you unlock your dailies and your weeklies. So we're just gonna go talk to them now. And as you can see, additional tasks have been unlocked, the dailies and the weeklies. So make sure that you do these every single day and every single week because uh, they give you a lot of meseta as well as a lot of EXP. So right after you've unlocked your dailies and your weeklies, your next goal is to get to 950 battle power. As you can see here, I'm only at 880. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply just going to go to my tasks over here and I'm going to do all of my dailies. 
And then I'm also going to work on my weeklies because weeklies also give a lot of money. So you're going to realize that the weeklies actually require you to defeat quite a lot of enemies. As you can see, enemy suppression 4 requires you to kill 500 enemies. So we will need to do a little bit of grinding. What I plan to do is to go to Mount Magnus rank 1 to just farm there for a little bit in order to complete my weeklies so that I get all of this juicy Masetta. But I will not be spending my money because Masetta is extremely valuable in the early game. You want to be very frugal with your money. So uh, yeah, basically just try not to spend any money. Try not to use the player market whenever possible. But as for your dailies, please do these every single day because they do give quite a lot of EXP and will help you level up extremely quickly. Then of course you also have the Leah May side quest that we all picked up. You can slowly work through these in order to level up in order to increase this battle power, all right? Do not upgrade any of your gear right now simply because we're going to be replacing all of this gear extremely soon. Now while exploring the open world of Alio, you might accidentally stumble upon these cocoons. It's very important when you access these cocoons to look at the recommended stats. As you can see here, the enemies are going to be level 15 in this area and the recommended battle power is 1184. As you can see, my battle power is nowhere close to that and my level is significantly lower than the enemy's level. Sure, I can still attempt to do the cocoon, but it is not recommended. I highly recommend people to come back to these cocoons when you're over leveled. That way it's a lot easier to do it, or at least do it at the recommended level or recommended battle power to have a much better experience. But do make sure to explore the map to find all of these cocoons because you can always teleport to a cocoon afterwards. So for example, Roaring Rush over here is too high level for me. I can't do it yet. However, I've unlocked the actual teleport or the cocoon. So in the future, let's say that I'm farming in North Elio or I'm Mount Magnus or something, and I'm finally high enough level to attempt it, I can just click on the cocoon, immediately click start quest, and it'll teleport me there so I can do it. So it's still in your best interest to explore the world, find all the different cocoons, because remember, cocoons are how we get skill points, which will also boost your battle power significantly. Now, while you're exploring the world, you're going to stumble upon these little red boxes or these item container reds. Make sure to destroy them because they do contain star gems as well as Masetta, as well as some other goodies, all right? Now, if you specifically want to find red boxes, press Y on your keyboard in order to bring up the mag thing and go to active sonar settings. And over here, you can tick whatever you want to scan for. So for example, let's say that we want minerals. If you tick minerals, now your little mag will scan for minerals. So when there's minerals close by, it will start beeping and letting you know that there's minerals close by. And it's the same with the red containers, gold containers, green, so forth and so on. So you can see that I took the red container and immediately my mag starts pinging that way. So it means that, oh, there's a red container somewhere over there. And so this is how you're able to just explore the world and find uh, different items as well as resources, which will help you a bit. So, uh, you know, don't try to rush leveling too much. Play the game at your own pace and explore the open world because it is really, really great, especially if it's your first time playing. Um, another thing that a lot of people are going to ask very, very quickly is, of course, this uh, weapon camo. How did I get this? Well, I am playing the game through the Epic Game Store. And if you play through the Epic Game Store, you go to Systems and go to Get Campaign Items. And you will have some rewards over here, which you can pick up, including this weapon camo, which I'm currently using, which is pretty nice because uh, it kind of looks cool, you know, rotates, little saw blade looking thing. But uh, yeah, anyway. I'm just going to continue to explore the open world, unlocking waypoints, cocoons, and uh, just slowly leveling up a bit so that I do hit that 950 battle power. So I'll see you when I hit 950. So now you can see my battle power is 969. Nice. So how did I manage to do this? Um, actually, it wasn't a lot of grinding. As you can see, I only leveled up once. The main thing that I did was actually unlock skill points. So when we open up the map over here, there are several cocoons that I went to. So these two were automatically unlocked at the very beginning. I ran into this one, but uh, because the mob level, it's level 15, and this does require you to kill some stuff. So I was just like, eh, no, it's fine. I'll skip that one. And so what I did instead was I went over here and there is arrow runner over here, which doesn't require you to kill anything, even though the recommended level is 15. But since uh, there wasn't anything to kill, it wasn't a big deal and we were able to just clear it. Remember, you don't need to get max score. You don't even need to clear any of the side missions. As long as you get to the very end, that's all that matters and you will get the skill points. 
So uh, this is a tower over here, so that actually gives four skill points. And then there was another one up here called Wild Rush. This one's a lot easier, all the enemies are level 5, so I was able to blast through them very, very easily. And this gave me an additional skill point right here. So I had a grand total of 5 skill points by doing these two right here. So once you have your skill points, you're going to come over here to the class counter, and again, just click on Learn Class Skills, and just allocate whatever skills you have. Remember, this also applies to your subclass. So you can see over here, for example, the Ranger. I've never leveled up the Ranger, my Ranger's level 1, but I have 8 skill points. And this applies to everything, all of my classes have 8 skill points because I've unlocked the skill points through the cocoons. So that is something really important that will help you quite a bit. Because when you use skill points on your subclass, this also increases your battle power. So please make sure to use all of your subclass points as well, okay? And so now since we've unlocked the next part of the story, we're just going to continue on with the story until it tells us that we need to increase our battle power again. Alright, so we've hit the next roadblock, which is get 1100 battle power. So you can see right now I'm at 1009 battle power. So we need a little bit more battle power, 91 battle power to be exact. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to level up to level 15. And so I'm actually going to be grinding at the Vanford Laboratories area until level 15. Something I didn't mention earlier was at Mount Magnus, you can only grind here until level 10. Once you hit level 10, all of the mobs are going to give you 1 EXP because you are 5 levels above the mobs level. Because at rank 1, all of the mobs are going to be level 5. So if you are level 10, you don't want to grind at Mount Magnus anymore until you unlock rank 2. And so the next place you want to grind is, of course, Vanford Laboratories. We're going to be grinding here until we hit level 15. Since all the mobs are level 10, we're going to get normal EXP until level 15. And once we do that, we should have enough battle power to continue on with the story. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'll see you guys once I hit level 15. All right, we have hit level 15, but my battle power is still pretty low. Now, while farming Vanford Laboratories, I was able to get a Vialto Boots. So this is a four-star rarity jet boots and also a Vialto armor, another four-star rarity armor. So I did equip this. Now we're going to equip the boots. So in order to do this, we're going to have to change our subclass into a bouncer since this is a bouncer weapon. So what we're going to do is here, we're going to come to our class changer. We're going to change our class change subclass over here to bouncer. And once you're done with that, the next thing we want to do is, of course, learn class skills. So we go to the bouncer tab over here. And then uh, we want to spend all of our 8 points. I think I'll put my points into Defeat Amplifier over here since it increases the down damage, the ideal. However, I will not be maining Bouncer anytime soon, which is why I'm okay with just throwing my points around into random skills that I want. And now we're going to see my battle power has not changed even though my Bouncer class is only level 8, right? However, what this does is it allows us to equip these Jet Boots. So we're going to equip the Jet Boots right here, boom. And we're going to switch to the jet boots. And now you can see my battle power has increased a little bit. Unfortunately, still not enough. So uh, since it's not enough, we're going to use the next best thing. And we are actually going to purchase a new weapon. So the weapon we're going to be looking for is called the Evil Coat. So you can just type Evo. So that's E-V-O-L. So in my case, I am looking for the Evil Coat Rod. So we can search this and then search by price. And you can see it's a thousand. You can literally just browse down the list and buy the cheapest one. Or if there's one with a fix set that's extremely cheap, you can buy that. But in most cases, we're just going to buy the cheapest one, which is a thousand. And right here, boom, purchase for a thousand and boom. All right, now we are going to equip the rod. So equip that, boom, replace it. And now we're going to remove these jet boots because we don't need that actually. And uh, equip. So now we are at 1,054 battle power. So I think what I'm going to be doing now is probably gain some more skill points. All right, we are back in town with 1,084 battle power. And I figured out how to get 1,100 really, really easily. And it, of course, has to do with my armor. So you want to go to the player shop and just buy three Gion armors with no fix or no nothing. As we can check the market prices, they will be around like... You know, I would say around 20,000 is probably going to be the price that I would pay at the most. Editor side note over here, you don't have to buy the Gion armors. You can buy any four star rarity armor and just enhance it and you'll be fine as well. Or you can just get more skill points. 
honestly, I do not recommend going the Gion armors like what I just did because you'll see later on in the video that I struggle a lot with the Dragon Boss or Next Alio as it uh, can pretty much one shot me with this armor set since by wearing this armor it actually deducts 30 HP in total which uh, really hurts my defenses and well yeah basically makes me one shottable and uh, yeah I struggle a lot on the boss because I want these armors. So my general recommendation is if you are a melee player and you play really really sloppy go with the yellow Vialto armors. If you want a well balanced build go with the Catalea armors the red ones and if you're a technique user go with the blue armor set. I don't remember the name so I'm gonna put it up right here. Boop there you go. So uh, those are the three armor sets I would probably go in hindsight because going Gion armors first of all it was more expensive and second of all it made my life a lot more difficult. All right, editor's note out, back to the video. So you can see here that I've picked up three Gion armors. Now we're gonna be sticking with this armor for quite some time. So feel free to enhance them all the way to plus 40 if you want. So as we can see here, we're gonna equip the selected items over here. We're gonna put Gion armor one, two, and three. And once we've got those, you can see our battle power is gonna be 1,110. So uh, we just accept that and boom. All right, we've managed to unlock the next part of the story. So uh, yeah, we're just going to continue on with the story and I'll catch you guys in a bit. So I realized by putting yourself into this build that I just recommended with the Gion armors, you basically have to play perfectly because when you get to this boss, you have to solo this by the way. Well, you get a couple NPCs, but they don't really do much. But uh, this boss can literally one shot you with your gear. So you do need to play extremely careful. As a force, it's not too bad because you can play at range and you can just run around and, uh, well, you can uh, not get hit, basically. As you can see, that one fire breath basically took out like 80% of my health. So you do need to play a little bit careful or else, uh, well, yeah, you can die very, very easily. But, you know, as long as you play safely from a distance and play carefully and patiently, you shouldn't have that much of an issue, especially if you're a force because you literally just keep shooting ice spells, you freeze the boss, and then you keep hitting its weak spot over here. And then once this is done, then we continue to uh, keep our distance and throw spells again. Now, if you do die on this boss, don't worry. You do, uh, when you click retry, it just brings you back to the boss. You don't need to do everything before the boss again. So uh, that is pretty nice. However, this boss fight is gonna be a little bit challenging. If it's too difficult, don't worry. You can just go back and just keep grinding on something else, try to level up or try to get a better gear. You know, you can always enhance your gear, especially your armors and maybe put some augments that increase your HP and defense maybe. But, uh, you know, in my case, I'm very stubborn. I want to play perfectly and um, that's what I just got to do because, uh, ow, please don't hit me. And voila, there we go. That is phase one complete. So we're not done yet, guys. So once you get into phase 2, just immediately run away from the boss. The boss is going to do a huge explosion attack and you just don't want to be caught in it. Alright? So just stand away, far far away and wait at a distance. He's now going to do his explosion. You want to run real far, alright? Because that explosion will one shot you. You can counter it if you are baller, but I ain't baller and oh my goodness, I'm getting destroyed. So you just want to stay at a very, very far distance. So if you are playing a melee class, you might not want to go the build that I have because, uh, well, you're going to be up close and personal. So what you want to do is you want to target the, uh, the yellow spot. You see that yellow shining spot? You can target, you can cycle through all the different spots after you press Q by pressing the tab key. So you can cycle through all the different weak spots. And there we go. We managed to freeze it. So we can now target the proper weak spot right here and continue to shoot it. I want to stay at a safe distance because I don't want to be too close to the boss. Good, we got another physical down. I think the NPCs are attacking the tail so that they can break the tail. That's fine, we're just going to stand back here and uh, safely shoot that yellow spot since it will be exposed for the entire duration. We're going to run away. Make sure to maintain distance, try not to get hit by too many spells, and voila, there we go, we managed to defeat it. So, as a range or technique user, you just want to stay 
far, far away. All right, as you can see, I am now in the desert zone that is also known as Ritem, and we have hit another wall where we need to reach level 20 on any class. You can see I'm still level 16. However, the reason we didn't upgrade any of our weapons or our armors is because when we get to this point, after you talk to Gaiden right here, you're actually going to receive a free weapon. You're going to receive a free evil coat rod and talus. It's not always going to be a rod, it's going to be whatever your main class is. So you can see my main class is a force, thus they give me both force weapons. Now if you played as a braver, it would give you a katana as well as a bow, and it will just automatically detect whatever main class you're playing and give you the weapons for that specific class. But on top of that, you're going to see that the weapons are ready at plus 39, and you can see the armor over here is also plus 39. Now before I said to buy the Gion armor, you don't have to use Gion armors, especially if you're a melee class. I would recommend maybe using the Catalea armor, or to be honest, any 4-star rarity armor will be perfectly fine. The reason why I personally went Gion armor was because I knew I was a force class, I was confident in my abilities of not getting hit much by the dragon, and so I was okay with going full glass cannon and pure DPS. But now is the fun part, we're going to enhance our weapon to plus 40, enhance our armor to plus 40, as well as unlock a level 3 weapon potential. So let us do that right now. We're simply going to run over here to the item lab. We're going to do item enhancement. We're going to enhance this rod since we decided to go with the rod. We're going to go to all storage over here and we're just going to throw in this plus 20 silver prim sword and boom. That way we get our weapon to plus 40. That is complete. Next thing is our armor. We're going to get the Catalea armor. Again, we're just going to go all storage. I have a silver prim armor. Let's just throw that in, get that to plus 40 as well. And the next thing we're going to do is, of course, unlock potential, which we need to do for the uh, plus 40 rod right here. So you can see here that it's potency plus 20%. We're going to do that. Say yes. Boom. And we're going to do it again. And we're going to do it one more time. Now, don't worry about the materials. They actually give you all the materials to do it. And voila. So now we are going to equip that rod and now you can see I am at 1159 battle power and the next objective is of course to hit level 20. So where should you grind? You're simply just going to go to Rezzle Force over here rank 1 because all the mobs are going to be level 15 and you're simply going to grind here until you hit level 20. There are alternatives if you don't like Rezzle Force, let's say you're like me and you're a fan of Vanford Laboratories. Once you hit 1184 battle power, you're able to go to the rank 2 version where all the mobs are going to be level 15 so you can grind here and likewise at Mount Magnus, once you hit 1184, you can also do the rank 2 zone and farm there. And bam, you can see that my battle power has increased significantly. I'm at 1275 and still level 18. And the reason why I was able to increase my battle power so much is simply because I did all of the cocoons available in Alio. So uh, you can see that there's Test Flight, there's Alter's Rush, Swift Jump, Bleeding Flight, Great Wall. These you did automatically, the first step as well as Enhance Enemies, you know, these are done by default. However, I also did the ones down here, so you can see there's Runaway, there's Wild Rush, there's Aerial Runner, as well as Roaring Rush. And by completing all of that, I had a total of 20 skill points which I was able to pump in, and thus that increased my battle power significantly. So if you are stuck on the previous battle power requirement, so you know the 1100, you can also just go out and do all those cocoons, and that will also boost your battle power significantly. So you save a little bit of meseta, so you don't need to buy any gear at all or farm for any gear, because I know that part is kind of a bottleneck, it's kind of annoying, because there's no real place to grind once you hit level 10, because you haven't unlocked Rezzel Forest, which is where you're supposed to grind from level 10 to level 15. So uh, you probably should just do that. And then the dragon fight itself, as I said earlier, just stay really, really far away and just keep blasting it and it'll die eventually, okay? However, since we unlock Ratem, getting to level 20 is actually really, really easy. It depends on how you want to do it. Personally, I think doing side quests is the easiest because you're going to notice there are a ton of NPCs in Ratem with this little paper thing on their head. You talk to them and they're going to give you this side quest over here and they all give you a hundred thousand EXP. 
that is a very significant amount of exp so you can just do a couple of these side quests level up extremely quickly and continue on with the story and another thing that i forgot to mention is the get to level 20 on any class this is actually a side quest it's not the main storyline the main storyline is right here as you can see i have already unlocked it it's called dolls in the canyon however the monsters here are going to be level 20 which is why i'm not going to go in until i'm level 20 as well just to make my life a little bit easier even though i do have the battle power and i do have the gear to do it i just want to be a little bit more overpowered so that I have an easier time during the story. But don't worry, 90% of the story is not going to be harder than that dragon boss that you just fought. That was pretty much like a bottleneck or like a skill check area. So if you manage to kill the dragon with no problem, you can go ahead and just blast through everything. Even if you are slightly underleveled, it's not a big deal. You're going to be fine. But that concludes the first part of this leveling series. Now I will continue to make videos about this character, but uh, do keep in mind these videos do take quite some time. Like everything you've just seen in this like 30 minute video is pretty much two weeks of progress because I don't actually have that much time to play multiple accounts or multiple characters because, uh, well, yeah, I have other obligations to do in life and my main account to take care of and stuff so uh, please understand that this series is going to take a little bit longer um, but at least I got the first part out so the second part will come out when I'm ready or when I get the footage and stuff but hopefully I'm organized and it shouldn't take too long before part two comes out. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel it really means a lot to me thank you again. But anyway, that's it for me today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye! What can I say except you're welcome for the heat?